welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yo khilan jagat चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ समासस नेमली अव्ययी भाव bahuvrihi and dvandva we have so far studied the theoretical background required for the process of compounding we also studied parts of the process of derivation of the samasas step by step where each step is generated as an output by this application of the sutras of panini then we started studying the avyayi bhava samasa and we are studying 2.1.6 in detail avyayi bhava samasa is an important type of samasa in sanskrit it can be represented with the help of this particular equation where we have x and y as two different independent units in the form of word form as well as meaning these two separate independent units are semantically interrelated so the speaker decides to merge these units into one unit so x and y so x plus y and then the output generated is xy this is one unit in xy x is shown with the bold characters it has got a purpose x in bold characters indicates that in this particular unit x acts as the head of the unit in terms of the word form as well as the meaning so x is going to be an avyaya xy is going to be an avyayi bhava samasa and in the avyayi bhava samasa x that is an avyaya acts as the head formally as well as semantically then it's not a surprise then that the avyayi bhava samasa behaves like its head namely the avyaya occupying the first position of course we know that an avyayi bhava samasa is also an avyaya so the word avyayi bhava expresses this delicate situation quite explicitly anavyayam avyayam bhavati so in x y only x is an avyaya y is not an avyaya but the output x y becomes an avyaya so anavyaya something that is not an avyaya avyayam bhavati becomes an avyaya that is avyayi bhava we said that in the ashtadhyayi 
the avyayi bhava samasa vidhayaka sutras are stated from 215 up to 221 avyayi bhava is 215 and anya padarthe cha saudnyayam is 2121 and 2122 incidentally is tat purushah the samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras related to the avyayi bhava samasa are stated in a bunch of small in a small bunch of sutras namely 5.4.107 up to 5.4.112 these are the prat suffixes which are added at the end of the compound and then we have swara vidhayaka sutra sutras prescribing the accent of the avyayi bhava compound namely 62121 etc then we started studying 2.1.6 and the sutra is avyayam vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi artha bhav atyay asamprati shabda pradurbhav paschat yatha anupurvya yogapadya sadrushya sampatti sakalya ant vachaneshu this particular sutra as we have already said consists of two padas first one is avyayam which is 1/1 and therefore it becomes upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then it occupies the initial position of the samasa by upasarjanam purvam and then the second pad in this particular sutra ends in seventh case 7/3 which indicates the semantic conditions and we listed down all the semantic conditions one by one and the meaning of this sutra also namely vibhaktya dishu artheshu vidyamanam avyayam subantam samarthena subantena sah samasyate avyayi bhavascha samaso bhavati विभक्तादिषु अर्थेशु विद्यमानम अव्ययम सुबंतम समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति व्हाट इट मींस इज दैट एनी इनडिक्लेनेबल सुबंत डिनोटिंग द सेंस ऑफ विभक्ति एटसेट्रा इज कंपाउंडेड विथ एनी अदर सेमेंटिकली रिलेटेड सुबंत एंड द रिजल्टेंट कंपाउंड is called avyayi bhava i repeat any indeclinable subanta denoting the sense of vibhakti etc is compounded with any other semantically related subanta and the resultant compound is called avyayi bhava these are the four semantic conditions that we are studying currently we have already studied vibhakti in the previous lecture now in this particular lecture we shall study samipa samruddhi and vriddhi as the semantic conditions where samipa means near or close samruddhi means prosperity and welfare and vriddhi means failure or loss or want of prosperity let us study them one by one first let us study the semantic condition samipa samipa means near or close this condition requires interrelation between two padas unlike the previous condition vibhakti which required only one pad thus the basic concept of samarthya is fulfilled the proximity is denoted by the indeclinables upa etc along with the sixth triplet that is shashti added after the nominal root pratipadika whose meaning is near
Now let us take an example. When we say near the jar, the laukika vigraha is kumbhasya samipam. Kumbhasya is shashti. Now upa represents samipa. Because in this particular sutra 216, avyayam is mentioned in prathama, the indeclinable or avyaya occupies the initial position of the compound. So we have upa plus su plus kumbha plus ngas. This we have already seen is called the alaukika vigraha of the samasa, transforming the laukika vigraha in the technical terms. We also say that it is this stage where the process of compounding is considered to have actually begun. At this particular stage, Upasarjanam Purvam has already applied. So Upaplasu has taken the initial position. Then 2471 applies and so it, we have Upa plus 0 plus Kumbha plus 0. And then when we join both words together, we get the form Upakumbha as the finally derived compound output, which means the same thing as Kumbhasya Samipam near the jar, Upakumbha. After which we input the word Upakumbha for a sentence. And so we have upakumbha plus su, which is a supratyaya, one, one. And then because upakumbha is an avyayibhava samasa, which ends in short a after bha. So the sutra, now avyayibhava atom tvapanchamyaha applies and substitutes su by am. So we have upakumbha plus am as the next derived step. And finally, and finally, after the application of the Sandhi rules, we get the form Upakumbham. This is the Prathama Ekavachana. When we derive the Trutiya and Saptami Ekavachana, we would get Upakumbham as well as Upakumbhena, Upakumbham as well as Upakumbhe by the application of the Sutra Trutiya Saptamya or Bahulam. We shall use the Samasa Upakumbha in the sentence in the following manner bhojanam upakumbham vartate food is near the jar bhojanam upakumbham vartate similarly we can say bhaktaha upakrishnam santi the devotees are close to krishna this is how in the semantic condition samipa, the avyayi bhava samasa takes place. Let us proceed to the next semantic condition which is samriddhi. Samriddhi is riddhehe adhikyam, that is excessive prosperity or excessive welfare. Now this meaning is the qualified element when whose prosperity element becomes the qualified, then Gati Purusha takes place. This is an important fact about this particular semantic condition. So we have Madranam Samruddhir Vartate as a statement Madranam adhikyena riddhir vartate. This is what samriddhi means. Madranam adhikyena riddhir vartate. There is excessive prosperity of madras. So now we have su as an indeclinable which denotes samriddhi. 
it occupies the initial position of the samasa because in the sutra 216 the word avyaya is mentioned in the prathama vibhakti su is an avyaya therefore it will occupy the initial position in the samasa first it will become upasarjana saudnyaka by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then it will occupy the initial position by the sutra upasarjanam purvam so now we have su plus su the first su is an avyaya the second su is the vibhakti pratyaya plus madra plus am then 2471 applies and we delete both the su pratyayas namely su and am and so we get su plus 0 plus madra plus 0 when we join them together we get sumatra as the finally derived compound output now the compound output sumatra ends in short a now when we use sumatra in the sentence we add the supratyaya after it here we add su which is the prathama ekavachana pratyaya now this su will be substituted by am on account of the sutra na vyayi bhavat atom tvavanchamyaha and so we have somadra plus am and then we apply the sandhi rule and then we get the finally derived sentence output namely somadram so the sentence would be somadram vartate there is excessive prosperity of madras similarly sumagadham vartate there is excessive prosperity of magadhas note that in this case sumadra and sumagadha is actually acting as a noun in these output compounds the meaning of the indeclinable is the head namely samriddhi which is the meaning of su it is the qualified and the meaning of madras and magadhas is the qualification when madras and magadhas are intended to be the heads then gati tatpurusha takes place and we'll get the forms sumadraha as well as sumagadhaha but that we have already dealt with in the first course on samasa so in case of avyayi bhava we'll get the forms sumadram and sumagadham and this will also act as the karta of the sentence now let us look at the next semantic condition which is called vriddhi vriddhi is v plus riddhi riddhi is prosperity v means viruddha vigata etc so vriddhi means failure or loss or want of prosperity the tradition interprets this word vriddhi as riddhehe abhavaha absence of prosperity since the word abhava is also mentioned here there is a doubt that arises in the mind of somebody which is recorded in the tradition how is this different than the artha bhava as a semantic condition stated in the same sutra and the explanation is the following artha bhava means absence of an entity here absence of the entity is not intended the entity exists but absence of the prosperity of that entity is what is intended this is the difference between riddheh abhavah and the artha bhavah so when the meaning is loss or want of prosperity of yavanas yavananam vriddhi that is the laukika vigraha so what it means is yavananam riddhi vigamaha yavanas were prosperous at some point in time but now that time has passed and now there is 
loss or want of prosperity of yavanas so now this meaning vriddhi will be represented by the nipat or the avyaya dur so we have dur plus su plus yavana plus am as the alaukika vigraha vakya then we apply supodhatu pratibadika yoho because of which su and am are deleted so we have dur plus zero plus yavana plus zero and then finally we get the compound output dur yavana this compound avyayi bhava compound ends in short a and therefore when we proceed to use this samasa in the sentence we add the suffix su after it so we have duryavana plus su and this su is substituted by am on account of the sutra navyayi bhavat atom tva panchamyaha 2483 since this duryavana is an avyayi bhava samasa which ends in short a uh, so su is substituted by am and then we have the sandhi takes taking place and so we get the form duryavanam as the pad when we use it in the sentence we'll say duryavanam vartate there is absence of prosperity of the yavana now in this case as well duryavana acts as the karta of the sentence similarly dushakam vartate there is absence of prosperity of the shakas there is absence of prosperity of gavadik and the sentence is durgavadikam vartate here the absence of yavana or the shaka or the gavadika is not intended nacha ih yavananam abhavah kintu tadiyayaha radher abhavah yavaniya vriddhi abhavasyaiva pratitehe because we have the experience of the absence of prosperity of the yavana and not that of yavanas themselves therefore this condition is different than artha bhava note that the output compound in this as well as the previous semantic condition behaves like a noun duryavanam vartate sumadram vartate sumagadham vartate and so on and acts as the agent of the action this is another function played by an indecrenable or the avyaya in the form of avyayi bhava samasa so in this lecture we studied three semantic conditions samip samruddhi and vriddhi and how these conditions are the basis for forming an avyayi bhava samasa all the examples taken here they end in short a uh, therefore the sutra navyayi bhavad atontva vanchamyaha applies and substitutes am in place of the respective pratyayas except of course the panchami pratyaya next we shall study how the processing of the avyayi bhava samasa happens with remaining semantic conditions and how that processing progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence this we shall study next these are the texts referred to Thank you very much.